Remy. Thank you. I'm Chris, a gearhead here at Competitive Cycles, and today we're going to give you an in-depth run-through of the Maxxis mountain bike tire line that we carry on CompetitiveCycles.com. Don't want to do this by myself, so I brought in my good friend Remy Metallier, all the way from Squamish, British Columbia, to help hey, us out. how are you? Good Thank man, how are you? Thanks for having me. Of course. Right on, well, uh, let's just dive into it now. Um, what tires do you run, and kind of what are your go-to tires for day-to-day -day riding? Pretty classic. DHR on the back, Asagai on the front, and that's what I use on every single of my bikes. I like the DHR because it's fast, uh, it's precise, it's predictable, and the Asagai on the front is a 2.5, little bit more volume, brings more comfort, and I really like the side knobs. Um, I find it predictable, and it really performs everywhere. So on that combo, I know I'm gonna be confident regardless where I ride. Nice. And uh, maybe let's dive into what the most classic uh, Maxxis setup is between the DHF and DHR, and maybe give a little bit of a difference between the DHF versus the Aska and why you've been riding that these days. Yeah. So the DHR and the DHF are the two oldest tires of the range. DH front, obviously, for front wheel, it's uh, more directional than the DHR. The DHR, though, offers a bit of a better braking uh, because of the center knobs. So that's what I used to run. Uh, but a few years ago, Maxis came out with the Asagai, which offers um, a bit more volume than the DHR. A lot of riders will actually run the DHR on the front and still on the World Cup circuit. Mm -hmm. I tried both, and it's, it's very personal, but I have more confidence on the Asagai. Um, you know, it's a little bit wider, so you have a bit more damping. You can lower your tire pressure a little bit. And for me, the Asagai has worked really well on basically any condition. From wet to really dry, slabs, tacky dirt, um, and that's really what I'm comfortable riding. Awesome. Um, for those of us that live in desert climates, maybe Southern California, Utah, Colorado, uh, what's the tire setup you might recommend for them? Well, so I've ridden actually in March uh, in Sedona, where the rocks are actually quite similar to the slabs we have in Squamish, and I had exact, uh, that exact same setup, so DHR, Asagai, 3C grip, mm -hmm. and it performed really well. If I wanted a bike that pedals a little bit lighter, I could go though for a D-sector, mm -hmm. uh, and even maybe a DHR on the front, just to get like faster rolling. But for what I was trying to achieve for me, grip and comfort was priority. So 
yeah, I was I was stuck with a Asa guy, and I'm actually going to Moab tomorrow, and I've chosen the exact same setup again. In terms of tire width, uh, what would you recommend for a front and rear setup? And I know there's a lot of confusing things with wide trail or two three two four. One big thing we say at competitive is to make sure you're adhering to the manufacturer's recommendations, so you're not you know putting too big of a tire in the rear and potentially dealing with an issue of frame rub. Um, but what width do you typically run? So 2.4 on the back, just because I want a bit faster rolling, and it also allows the tire to really bite the dirt. Mm -hmm. Whereas on the front, I want as much uh, traction as I can, but also uh, as much comfort as possible. So that's why I really like the Asaga in 2.5. The DHF also comes in 2.5, also in 235, but I really like the 2.5 for the same reason. Mm -hmm. More comfort, more grip. It's okay to go with a slightly smaller tire on the back uh, versus the front, whereas a moto is usually the contrary, where mm -hmm. you have a skinnier tire on the front than on the rear. But on a mountain bike, that's normally slightly skinnier on the back, slightly fatter on the front. And going from width and tread pattern into uh, durability, do you want to give the viewer a bit of a rundown of Maxxis's protection casings um, and maybe what casing is for them? What's really good with Maxxis is that they offer uh, a full range of casing and, and the casing of the tire to me is just as important as the tread pattern. Mm -hmm. The casing is going to impact the reliability but also how the tire performs. Here in front of me I've got a DH casing which is the strongest casing. It's heavier so of course it's harder to pedal, but it's going to offer better performance. The tire is going to read the terrain better, it's more reliable, and you can lower your tire pressure a little bit, so you can get uh, the front of the bike or the rear that's going to be more comfortable. And for me, that's, that's really important to think about performance going downhill, but also reliability. Uh, on this bike, uh, I've got a set of double down tire, which is mm -hmm. the category below a DH casing. Which is their enduro casing? Exactly. So that's the enduro casing. It's still very reliable. Mm -hmm. It still offer, offers really good damping, but it's a bit lighter, so it pedals a bit better. And for the kind of riding that you will do around Moab, around Squamish, uh, around Sedona, mm -hmm. you need reliability, but at the same time, uh, you want a bike that's going to stay fairly light, so the uphill are not too painful. Yeah. And so double down is, is a really good bet. If you're a bit less of an aggressive rider, I think the EXO Plus is a really good casing because it's still very reliable. You still get good support, not as much as the double down or the DH casing, but enough to still go fast. And you get a lighter tire, so a bike that's going to perform better uphill. Yeah, I definitely, I've also seen people going EXO casing in the front and double down in the rear because, you know, you're a little bit more in control of your line choice with your front tire and the back tends to have a little bit more weight on it, takes a bit more of a beating in corners. Exactly. Um, so yeah, that's a pretty common setup I see as well. Yeah, and it's usually 40% of your weight is on the front wheel, 60% on the back wheel, which is why normally you run a bit higher PSI on the back wheel than on the mm -hmm. front wheel. Also, when you make a mistake and clip a rock, it's usually with your rear wheel, mm -hmm. not with your front wheel. So in terms of tire pressure, I'm usually a couple of PSI uh, heavier on the back than I'm on the front. We might have to beep this out, but can you tell us what you run for tire pressure? Yes, I can. So it depends on the casing, uh, but on that set of double down tire, mm -hmm. uh, I run 22 on the back, 20 on the front. That's is that for all trail riding and then That's, you bump it up at the bike park or? Yeah, so it, it really depends on how rocky is going to be the trail, mm -hmm. how big are the compression, how fast are the trails. The slower the trails are, the less the compression has are, mm -hmm. then I can lower a little bit the tire pressure. It also depends if it's wet, if it's cold, but on a double down I can go as low as 18 on the front, 20 on the back. Nice. But I would say that 2022 20, is you know, where I'm at 90% of the time. Do you run a tire insert no, ever? I do not. I do not because I feel that I've got enough experience with the product, with Maxxis, that I know how low of a tire pressure I can go mm -hmm. without any reliability issue. And yes, having a tire insert can offer a little bit more damping. At the same time, it's a bit heavier, not as nice to pedal. And I'm a light rider, so I don't feel like I need as much support. I feel like the casing of the tire by itself give me enough um, 
you know, security when I ride that I don't need to add. Check out the link in the description for those of you that do case jumps like me for a tire insert of your choice. I think the last thing we need to cover is uh, the grip and tire compound. Yeah. Um, do you want to give us a bit of a run through through Maxxis's uh, grip compounds? Totally. So Maxxis got the famous 3C grip, which is going to be your softest compound. It uses three different compounds depending on where it is placed uh, on the tire. And 3C Terra is going to be um, a little bit stiffer, so more durability, more pedaling performance. My personal choice is the 3C Max Grip, just because that's going to be the highest level of uh, traction and the tire being the contact with the ground for me, it's absolutely key to really put all the performance I can uh, on the tire so I can, I can push myself and, and ride better. Obviously, the downside, your bike is going to be slightly slower uh, going uphill and you will mostly uh, feel that going on roads or really hard packed terrain. And the 3 CTR is a faster rolling tire. It doesn't wear nearly as fast but obviously you get less performance. So it really depends what you're trying to achieve. If you go on a trip, for how long you go. Uh, as an example, I went to Sedona, I rode seven days last year, and I had 3C grip front and back. I had the highest level of performance. I was really able to push myself to ride new lines and really go outside of my comfort zone safely. But as a downside, my rear tire worn out faster than a 3TR uh, would have done. Cool, so now, like knowing that and cruising through the whole wear of a tire in seven days, what are some tips and tricks to let the consumer know when they need to be changing a tire out and looking for a new set? Um, and what are some serious signs of wear? Just like you will do on a car, you do a visual inspection. So you look at, at the knobs and how much smaller they got. Um, obviously, if they are too low, then the knobs can bite anymore on the dirt and you lose performance. Also with a 3C grip or 3C Terra, the best rubber, the softest one, is on top. So once you wear it out, you'll get to the stiffer um, rubber and you will lose performance. As soon as you start noticing a wear on the tire, then that's when you consider changing it. Obviously, changing tire has, has a cost, so you have to take that in, in consideration. But I think the visual inspection is the most important. If the tire has a slash or anything that could affect reliability, and anything that could be a concern, then I think you should be changing um, the tire. So if you're looking for a more durable and faster rolling tire, check out tires with the 3C Max Terra compound. And if you're looking for performance and the most grip possible, check out the 3C Max Grip from Maxxis. Thanks for tuning in for a high level run through of Maxxis's tire lineup today with Remy. We appreciate you coming in, man. You. Um, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment below what your go-to tire combo is from Maxxis or other brands. Uh, reach out to Gearhead if you have any bike-related questions today. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.